Welcome to Midweek Mysteries, and thank you for being here. I'm your host, Nick Ryan. If you're new to the show, Midweek Mysteries is a shorter version of our full-length Sunday episodes, where we also enjoy giving a personal shout-out to our newest supporters, so be sure to tune in. If you're interested in supporting the podcast, you can become a patron at patreon.com forward slash paranormal mysteries. Or if you prefer to make a one-time donation, please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash paranormal. And as always, subscribing to the podcast and sharing it with your friends is one of the best ways to show your support, and we appreciate it. Now, let's see what today's storytellers have to say. Today's first midweek mystery comes to us from Andrea. Andrea shared her experience with a bizarre trickster entity in a previous episode, and after I followed up with her, she had this to say. Once again, I want to thank you. It is always nice to know you are being heard. I actually do have more to share. Strangely enough, after sharing my story, my coworker and I are once again experiencing the little jerk. She has started to see shadows moving in the corners of her eye, and she describes the same shapes that I would see. A child-sized or smaller blobbish shadow trying to get your attention and being annoying. Things disappearing and reappearing in strange places. Tapping and scratching sounds and the like. I am trying to get her to tune into your podcast so she can share her experience firsthand. Her sister also has a very similar thing that follows her, and I find it very odd that once I told my coworker my story and she told her sister about it, she also started experiencing it. She had never had issues before. I know that her sister's thing told mine, and mine decided to come back once it heard that I was talking about it. It hasn't been as bad for me just experiencing objects disappearing, and once everyone has looked around and can't find it, bam, there it is in the middle of the floor, where five people just looked a moment ago. Just like my homework in high school, I would be in a group doing my homework for an upcoming class, you know, because we were all horrible students like that. All 15 of the kids in the group, and sometimes even the teacher, saw the homework and saw me put it in my folder. Then, 10 minutes later, the teacher would ask for the homework, and I would open my folder, but it would be empty, or just not have the homework in there at all. We would all look for it, all of them trying to vouch for me, or the teacher saying that she knew that I had done it, and that they just watched me do it but the homework would just be gone. The teacher would have a cutoff time where no homework could be turned in after that time, with no exceptions. Once that time was called, bam, there was my homework in the front of the folder, or just sitting on my previously empty desk. Super obvious, and everyone would acknowledge it. My teachers constantly used the Twilight Zone tune when it happened, which was around three times a month. During finals week, it happened all the time, and during super big tests, like the SAT. All of the results for the whole class got lost and had to be redone, or had the whole school penalized for losing important paperwork once it was found. Now that the annoying thing is back, my coworker and I were talking, and we do have a theory about its appearance. We believe it might be a shapeshifter that I caught between forms, since my friend and I all have seen very different things. One saw a super hot girl, one saw me petting a dog, and one saw me talking to a tall man. I have seen a man with a curly mustache waving his arms, yelling and jumping frantically in my peripherals. My dog even turned into something that looked like a Muppet. I also see cars driving at me in the middle of the lane, only knowing that they aren't there, because no one else in my car is freaking out, and shadows turn to demons crawling out of the ground. Recently, nothing visual has happened, but I do not look forward to seeing it catch up on missed time. I will update as things happen, and hopefully my coworker joins the podcast soon. Our next midweek mystery comes to us from Tabitha. Tabitha's story is called Boy in a Batman Mask. Tabitha says, I discovered your podcast on a road trip, and I've really enjoyed the episodes, especially the midweek mysteries. Those are my favorite and I've been listening to them while I draw. Listening to your episode on demons and fairies reminded me of a paranormal experience I had a few times. I was in high school, about 14, and in biology class. My biology classroom had two doors, 
one near the teacher's desk at the front, and one near the lab tables at the back. My table group and I had just finished our worksheet and were sitting around talking. As I watched, a boy about 16 or 17 years old, resembling my brother, with blonde hair and brown eyes, wearing pants and shoes from the late 60s or early 70s, and a Batman hoodie with the hood pulled up, walked in through the back door. He glanced around the room as if observing everything and walked into the bag hanging off the trash can, causing it to rustle. We only made eye contact for a minute before he disappeared behind one of my classmates across the room. I grabbed the paper scraps from my table and went to throw them away, looking around for him, but he was gone. This gave me chills. People don't just disappear. I asked my classmates if they'd seen him, but they just thought I was crazy or something for thinking that I saw a ghost. I went online and asked a paranormal subreddit, and someone mentioned that it could be a residual haunting, like a tape recorder being played over and over again. But that doesn't explain why I've only ever seen him once. Is it a yearly thing? I don't know. The last time I saw him was about six months later, in May of that year, during a track meet. It was the very last race. I remember the two-mile run, and me and a bunch of others were standing in the middle of the track, waving at spectators when I saw him again. I was waving to the crowd with my friends when I saw him, and he waved back at me before stopping suddenly and turning around, stepping up two stairs, and vanishing into thin air. The stadium lights were on him the whole time. He never felt malicious or hateful, more joking and friendly, the way high school-aged boys act. He's never come to my house or haunted me specifically, so I think it's the school. It was built in the early 70s, so there's a possibility that he's a ghost of a former student looking for a sibling, maybe his sister, as he does look like my brother. That's all I have to tell you about him, but thank you for reading this. Sincerely, Tabitha. Our next midweek mystery comes to us from Eric. Eric's story is called Hellhounds. Eric says, Hey Nick, I recently started listening to your podcast. Great product. Thanks for a place where we can all share our experiences. My experience started years ago. I really can't remember what year. I just remember I was in my early teens. It was summertime, and it was time for our family reunion. We had it at a place here in Fresno called Kearney Park which is said to be haunted. I can tell you that it is, but not by ghosts. Anyway, we were there at the park most of the day laughing, joking, all the typical family reunion stuff, nothing special. As the day came to an end, people began packing up to leave. Right around this time, the sun was setting, and if you grew up hearing the stories or knew of Kearney Park, then you knew to leave before the sun had fully set. My mom and stepdad had finished packing up our car, and, as I'm the oldest, it was my job to round up my brothers and the family dog, Blue, who was a mix of a chow lab, so small was not a word to describe our dog. I called out for him, and I heard him running towards me, and he passed me by and kept running until he reached the car. I wanted to see what had scared him that he ran as fast as he did, and then I saw it. Whatever it was, was dark, darker than a shadow. It was too far for me to clearly see, but I can say that it was at least eight feet long and six feet tall, and eyes red as embers. As I locked eyes, I heard a low, unearthly growl. I then ran towards the awaiting car. As I was running, I could hear footsteps, not as if it was running, but just walking. I finally made it to the car, panting and scared half to death, wanting to get out of the park as quick as possible. I had only found out what it was in the park years later, when I had finally confessed to my mom that I had seen something that night. She had told me that there are hellhounds that are said to live in the park. I know the legend says that those who have seen a hellhound will be followed by death. I for one don't believe that's the case, but I do believe that it haunts me. Every so often, I feel its presence, and I've been on long drives where I've seen the red glowing eyes. I'll never forget that feeling I had years ago, as it will never leave me. Thank you again for what you do. Our next story of the night comes from Kaya. I have just recently come across your podcast, and I'm very intrigued. 
It was late summer of 2017 in Colorado. My brother and I and a few of his friends were riding our bikes down to the skate park. Upon entering the parking lot, I got a glimpse in the sky of what seemed to be four orange dots moving in various directions. I immediately stopped and pointed at the sky and yelled at my brother and his friends to look. Only one of his friends spotted the strange objects before they vanished. Still startled by what we had seen, we carried on to the skate park to find out that many others were talking about it and had seen the orange dots in the sky. Thank you for reading my experience. Our next story of the night comes from Shannon Lee. Shannon Lee says, Greetings, Nick. I have been a silent stalker of your podcast for almost a year now. I am fascinated by the unexplained phenomena, but at the same time, I am a skeptic. Because if I choose to believe something, I want it to be real, if that makes sense. I have noticed that your listener letters seem to always include the phrase, I have many more stories, which makes me wonder if some people truly are magnets for such things. I myself have only a handful of strange incidents that have happened in my life, no more than I would consider normal for someone of 50 years old. But the fact that you have so many listeners that have a multitude of experiences, it occurs to me that your show has created a safe place for them to share without being ridiculed or ostracized. And that is a cause that I want to contribute to. So I recently became a patron to help you continue this great service. I have had an experience that I would love to get input on from your listeners, as quite honestly, I'm at a loss to explain it. I live in very rural northern Nevada. No, I'm not anywhere near Area 51. That's at the other end of the state. It is so rural, in fact, that we do not have any businesses here, not even a gas station, and the nearest city is just over two hours away. Our property is 117 acres at the end of 20 miles of dirt road. Trust me, this information is pertinent. Point is, we are not near any foot or vehicular traffic whatsoever. We live in a very small cabin that faces a huge barn across our driveway, about 60 feet from our front porch. The barn has been converted to a garage with a large roll-up door, tall enough for an RV and a workshop. It also has several windows for ventilation. At about 2 a.m., my hubby and I had just finished watching some TV, and we were ready for bed. I opted to step out onto the front porch to have a cigarette before turning in. I stepped out lit my cigarette, and turned to sit in a chair, looking out across the driveway at the barn. I almost instantly froze, because I saw a figure walking across the front of the barn, in front of the white roll-up garage door, and then in front of one of the windows. The figure was jet black, but it was not a shadow. It was very solid, very defined, and definitely three-dimensional. I assumed it was a male, because I could see the smooth roundness in the top of its head as if it were a bald man. I dropped my cigarette and went running back into the house, shouting for my husband. I told him, there's some man walking around our barn out there, and he grabbed his gun to go and inspect. We do have mountain lions and bears out here, so you never go and inspect, unarmed. He was outside for a good ten minutes, while I frantically turned out all the lights inside, so no one outside could see in. He came back in and said he couldn't find anything, even after checking the full perimeter of the barn. I came out onto the porch and said, But he was right there, right there. I saw him walk in front of the garage door and window. My husband pointed at the barn window and said, You saw him in front of that window? I said yes, and my husband said, Impossible. And without a word, he walked off the porch and over to the barn. Suddenly I realized that it was something more mysterious than just a random trespasser in the middle of nowhere. My husband, who is six foot two, went and stood under the window. If a person were to walk in front of the window, they would have had to have been at least nine feet tall. This was four years ago, and I haven't seen it since. Although occasionally, my dogs will suddenly lose their minds in the wee hours of the morning, frantically barking at the front door is if they think someone is out there. If you or any of your listeners can shed some light or theories on this, I truly would like to hear them. As we come to the end of this edition of Midweek Mysteries, I'd like to say thank you to all of you for tuning in and supporting the podcast. 
And a special thank you goes out to Andrea, Tabitha, Eric, Kaya, and Shannon Lee for writing in and sharing their experiences with all of us. If you've witnessed something unexplainable and you'd like to have your story shared on the podcast, please contact me at paranormalmysteriespodcast at gmail.com or visit paranormalmysteriespodcast.com and click on the Tell Your Story link. All of our contact information can be found in the show notes. Until next time, I hope you all have a safe and healthy rest of the week, and we'll see you back here on Sunday with our next full-length episode. From all of us at the Paranormal Mysteries Podcast, thank you for listening, and please remember, don't wait for the unknown to come to you. Get out there and find it. 